Welcome to the lab video for Module 8 from course 10981A. In this video we've actually been requested by the application management team of Adatum to enable them to deploy virtual machines for some images they would like. So we're going to look at different ways that we can actually prepare images and potentially set some default options within the image when they're, when they're deployed as part of a self-service solution. So having opened up Virtual Machine Manager if we go across to the library interface and look at LAN LS1, one of the things that we'll be able to see on the library server will hopefully be an ISO file. So you can see the very top object there is the ISO file we're going to use to install our Windows Server image that we'll then prepare for the Adatum application team. So the first thing we're going to do is create a virtual machine. So we're going to go up to the Create section and hit Create Virtual Machine and we're going to create the virtual machine with a blank virtual hard disk because we're going to install the operating system into the virtual machine. So I'm going to select the uh, create new virtual machine with blank disk, give the virtual machine a name, so this could be the name that's going to be the, the basis of our template, so a datum underscore reference generation 1, that's, that's what they've requested go across to the configure hardware and obviously one of the key things we need to make sure we do because we're going to install an operating system into here is obviously attach the ISO image obviously if we forgot to do this we can obviously add this later on um, simply make sure we uh, connect it to a network so we'll actually choose the network that we need it to be connected to so again this is the image that we're going to be building so we just need to make sure that we have access to it from a management point of view so we'll connect it to our virtual machine management network and because our host obviously running in a cluster then we need to tick the box to say make this machine highly available okay so that when we provision it it will present our hosts to us so we'll press OK we'll go and tell it where we'd like to uh, perform the sizing so we can deploy it to the uh, a datum cloud in our case so we can be using the datum resources but obviously because we're building a reference image we could have built it anywhere um, not really too worried about the uh, the properties here but again if you wanted to set these values maybe if you're going to turn things into a, a template later on you might consider to actually change those so we'll just go and set that if the Hyper-V host stops turn the virtual machine off we don't want to waste time shutting this machine down just while we're building a reference image so that will now go and start the provisioning of the virtual machine. So the creation of the virtual machine will be a pretty quick process because we're building it with a blank virtual disk. So this should only take a, a few seconds to go and provision. So we're coming to the end of the provisioning process. So as we can see the virtual machine is now finished being provisioned. But obviously that's not installed the operating system. It's literally just created the virtual machine, attached the ISO to it. So the virtual machine is empty. So we can power the virtual machine on and we can then connect to the virtual machine. And as part of obviously powering the machine on, it will boot from the ISO and it will allow us to then finalize the operating system installation. So as we can see, obviously got the initial splash screen that you'd expect where you set your language requirements. We can obviously progress our way through the installation. So again, we'll just speed this up. So as we fly through the setup process, we should hopefully see that we'll end up at the first of the personalization screens. So here's we go, obviously we've got to specify the uh, password for the local administrator account. So we'll just enter those credentials. We can now log on to the machine. Having now logged on to the machine, we could obviously now start making some of the personalization choices that the a datum application team actually require us to make. So if we go across to the manage tool and choose to sort of add remote add roles and features within server manager, we can navigate our way through the, the wizard so we can make sure that we install the roles obviously on this machine and we could actually choose the features that we want. So the datum team have asked us to um, install IIS so we can make sure that we add the corresponding features as well. So 
So the rest of the options in the wizard, we're just going to take all of the defaults and press install. And we'll just wait for this to finish. Having completed the installation of Internet Information Server, we are now have met the requirements for the Adatum application group, so they will be quite happy with the work that we've done. So what we now need to do is prepare this so that it can be used as an image. So as always with Windows operating systems, we go through the sysprep process to anomalize the machine so that it can be personalized upon first deployment. So we'll just go and open up a command prompt and then in the command prompt we'll actually go and run the sysprep utility. So sysprep is stored in the sysprep folder underneath Windows System32 now and we can run sysprep.exe with the forward slash generalize which is the parameter that says remove the computer name um, all of the personal identity information, it will clean out the event logs and various other bits and pieces. We've then got the um, option which says Ubi, so that's the out of box experience, it will prompt you for uh, password and so on. And we've got this new switch, mode colon VM. What that actually does is it actually tells the system that it's going to be running on the same virtualization platform as I'm actually running the sysprep on. So effectively it will actually shorten the time it takes to prepare the, the machine when deployed because the, the system will know only to check the hardware for, for the current virtualization platform. What this does mean though is this image that I'm creating now cannot be used to deploy onto physical boxes and it cannot be used to, to deploy onto other virtualization platforms. So it does take into account specifically the virtualization platform that you're on and makes uh, some specific changes to increase the speed of deploying the image. So this will take a little while so we'll come back once this process is finished. So the sysprep process should be coming to an end because we used the shutdown parameter as we can see the computer is now shutting down. So once the system has finished shutting down we'll then be able to take this VHD, store it in the library and, and use it for provisioning. OK, so having now shut down the virtual machine, we'll switch over to Virtual Machine Manager and complete the final or final steps in this area. So you can see we've got the virtual machine. What we're actually going to do is just go across to the hardware configuration so we can actually have a look at where the virtual disk for this virtual machine is actually stored. So we can actually see the cluster storage folder, volume 1, a datum reference, and then a datum reference disk of 1.vhdx. So we can actually see the VHD file that we've just created, which has our sysprep version of the Windows Server 2012 R2 operating system in. OK, so we can just obviously browse just to confirm where that's going to be and so on. So we can switch over to File Explorer and we can browse to that location, Volume 1, Date and Reference. There we can see the actual VHD, VHDX that we care about. So we can take a copy of that and we can now actually move that into the Virtual Machine Manager library. So we're going to go across to LS1, obviously off to a datum, and we'll paste that into the Virtual Hard Disk folder. That's obviously going to take, a, again, a few seconds to copy, so we'll come back once that's complete. So as the file process finishes copying, we've now moved that into the library. One thing always to remember with Virtual Machine Manager, with respect to libraries, is the data gets refreshed periodically. So we'll just delete the virtual machine as we was on that pane, because we don't need that virtual machine anymore. And then when we go across to the library, we will actually see that at this moment, the virtual hard disk doesn't appear in the library. But if we right click and hit a refresh, we should hopefully see the disk will appear shortly. So there's the datum reference disk appearing in the list. So we've sysprepped this disk, having installed the roles and features on that we want. So hopefully now, if we just give it a test, if we was to use a create virtual machine wizard, this time what we can do is we can actually say that we want to use an existing uh, virtual machine template or virtual machine disk. We can pick the datum one. We can give the virtual machine a name. So we'll call this virtual machine a datum underscore ws1, so web server 1. Again we'll just go and configure the networking, 
So we'll just put it onto our management network for the purpose of testing. So we don't need to specify any disks because obviously we picked that from the beginning of the wizard. Again, because we're deploying into our cluster, because that's all we've got, we're just going to say we want to make this machine highly available. We'll deploy it into the cloud, and obviously it's for a datum, so we might also use their cloud to test. And again, we can just, because we're testing, say turn off the virtual machine if the hypervisor needs to stop for some reason. So we'll hit create, and that will hopefully go and start provisioning our virtual machine. So obviously again this is going to take a little while to provision, so we can see we've got a job and we'll just need to wait for that job to complete. And obviously the lion's share of that job is going to be elements along the lines of you know, copying the file and so on. So we'll come back once the job's finished. So the job's just coming to an end as we can see, there we go. So if we go over and look at the virtual machine, so we go to VMs and services, we can see the virtual machine that we've just created in the Adata and Production Cloud. If we right click and hit power on, we could actually start the virtual machine. So we'll connect to the virtual machine and actually see what will now happen. So hopefully what we should have is the virtual machine will power up, ready effectively to be personalized. So the next stage would actually then be to look at how we could personalize the machine, actually complete tasks like naming the machine, setting local passwords, joining machines into the domain and so on. So hopefully this is going to give us that sort of out-of-box experience. So we can see that it's just gone through and completed the hardware detection. Obviously that happened really quickly just purely because we use that mode colon VM uh, parameter. It makes a big difference to that hardware detection phase. So hopefully now we should actually be prompted to enter the password we'd like to be used use for the local administrator account. So we'll apply the regional information first, obviously make sure that uh, we get the keyboard mapping correctly, nothing worse than typing uh, complex passwords in and uh, the symbol characters don't map correctly. And then we can obviously supply the administrative password. So we'll enter the password for the local administrator account, having agreed to the license agreement, and wait for the login screen, which just should be one or two seconds. Obviously, once we get the login screen, we could then obviously sign into the machine and confirm all of our customizations. Having now signed in, signed in successfully, we have the server manager. We can see IIS is actually listed and installed. So it looks like, based on all the requirements we had, the machine's installed successfully. So we'll just shut this virtual machine down. Um, no longer need it. We've just proved that uh, the, the work that we've done, the virtual hard disk file, does exactly what we want it to. So we'll delete it. So we'll delete this once it's finished shutting down successfully. So the other scenario we considered was actually being able to create an answer file and build machines from an answer file. So we'll start to look at how would we, we would go through that process once we've just gone and deleted this virtual machine. So we'll just highlight the datum WS1 and we will delete the virtual machine. Now, in order to make life easier creating an answer file, you do need access to the system image manager, the Windows system Im image manager. So we've got that installed on our machine, but the first thing we are going to need access to is actually going to be the install.wim file. So the install.wim file we can read from the installation media. So we've just created a folder called a datum images and we're going to copy the install.wim file into there. So we're just going across to where we've got all of our stored data. We're just going to open up the Windows Server 2012 WIM file. We'll go into the sources folder and inside there we should find the install.wim. So the install.wim, if you're not from WIM files, contains all of the source files for building operating systems from the installation media. So we're just going to paste that back across onto our host so that we can interact with the install.wim file. So this will take a few seconds just to go and copy. So as the file finishes copying, we now have the file that contains 
all the requirements for building an answer file. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go and actually run the, the Windows System Image Manage software. So this comes as part of the Windows Automated de Deployment Toolkit. So hopefully if we just go and search for it, so there's the Windows System Image Manager, we can launch that application. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually open up the WIM file itself. So we'll just right click, select Windows Image and browse to the location we just copied the WIM file. When we open this it will present us with all the different images that are inside there. So we want the 2012 R2 uh, uh, data center, we don't want the core version. Okay. Now the Windows System Image Manager uses an index to actually understand what's in the file when it actually creates a catalog file that contains all of this index information. So because we don't have a catalog file it needs to build it by analyzing the content of the the image that we want to deploy. So this takes a little while to go and build this catalog. So we'll come back once the catalog's been finished being built. So as the catalog generation file completes we should see on the left hand side we've actually got the components and packages. This allows us to select the individual pieces of the answer file that we would like to customize. So obviously one of all, always the problems in here is understanding what you want to customize and where you find those particular settings. So we're going to make a couple of minor changes and we're going to create a new answer file and we're actually going to make changes that would just adjust the screen resolution for images that get deployed. So hopefully what we can do is we can come down and we can find the section of the answer file which contains all of that information. So often the uh, online documentation helps us quite a lot to be able to find that information. So we're interested in the Windows Shell setup and then display. So we're going to add this to what we call the UBI pass. So this is going to be one of the very last things that happens. So it's going to set the screen resolution at the end of the personalization. So we're going to basically go and specify a pretty high screen resolution just so that we get this completely distorted screen size so it's pretty obvious that we've actually applied the screen resolution that we wanted. So we've gone and answered all the questions that we need. So we're just now going to save that answer file. So file save. And we're just going to save it in the same folder. Okay. So we're going to go and save it as unattend.xml. The file format, if you've not worked with these, is in XML, so obviously you could go in and edit it natively if you wanted to, but obviously the Windows System Image Manager makes it much, much easier, and it also ensures that the syntax is valid. So we can now see we've got the answer file and that catalog file that was created. So we can actually just go and make sure that we uh, connect back to our library server. And what we can actually do is create a place where we're going to store our unattended answer files. So we're just going to create an unattend directory and we'll be able to put the unattended answer file in that folder. So we'll just take a copy of the file and put it into that folder. So switching back to where we maintain our scripts we've been to a few times. Okay. We're also just going to grab something else. So this is a, a tool that's actually available from the TechNet site, convert-windowsimage.ps1. What this will actually do is it will allow you to take a WIM file and actually just can turn it in, into a VHD file. So this is going to make actually taking that install.wim that we had just now and turning it into a VHD file that we can then attach our answer file to very, very easily and very, very quickly. So to use the tool, we use the convert-windowsimage.ps1 and then we need to specify a number of parameters. So we need to specify the install.wim file. We also need to specify the file name that we want to create and because we saw there was multiple images in it, we need to tell it which image we want to uh, uh, create, uh, we want to build from as well. So we use the minus source path to specify install.wim. The minus addition is the image. So you think there was those four images, we want image number four. And then effectively the VHD format. So we're going to go and create a VHDX. Okay. So this is actually going to go and build 
our VHDX file for us from that WIM file directly. So much, much quicker than building a virtual machine and having to sys prep and go through all those processes. So even though it's much, much quicker, this still does take a couple of minutes, so we'll be back in a moment. So the creation process has just come to an end. So we will actually just jump into Explorer and because we didn't specify a file name, the file name is based on the name inside the WIM. So we'll just go and rename the file to something far more manageable and far more meaningful. So we'll just change the name of that uh, HDX file to a datum underscore application underscore reference underscore image. And then we'll just take a copy of that and same as always before, we'll now go and move that into the library. So we now actually have our VHD sitting in the library. So again, we'll come back once the copy's finished. So as the file copy approaches the finish, we'll just go and do a bit of cleanup. So we'll just get rid of that window, go into the library server. Obviously we just need to go and refresh the library server so that we can see the new VHD file appear. So hopefully there we go. So we now have our new VHDX file and we have our answer file that we've actually created now. So just switching across to where we store the scripts, so the module 8 folder. If we just open up one of the scripts that we've got, we can actually see here we've got a script which will actually go and create us a new virtual machine using the script and it would actually allow us to use the VHD that we've just created and it would also attach the answer file that we've just created as well. So again quite easily you could do this through scripted based processes. But let's go and create the virtual machine graphically. So we'll hit the create virtual machine, we'll obviously select the VHD file that we've just created or the VHDX file We'll give the virtual machine a name, so a datum underscore application underscore reference so we'll move on into the wizard so we'll press the next button so again we'll sort out the network adapter and the availability, make this VM highly available for all the same reasons we've done that several times already. Okay, and we'll tell the system to deploy the virtual machine into the a datum cloud, and again we'll do the same for turning the machine off if someone shuts down the Hyper-V host. So that will go and create our virtual machine for us, and just as we've seen, that's going to take a few minutes to go and create. So we'll just go and make sure the job's progressing in the jobs window and then we'll wait for the creation process to complete. So the virtual machine is finished being created so what we can now do is go and power the virtual machine on so we can start to finish off the personalization process. Remember this is just a, a, a virtual machine built from the install.wim so there's no personalization with this out of the box. So we'll just actually go and connect to the virtual machine and just power the virtual machine up. Now what you will notice here is th the section where it actually does the hardware detection will take quite a bit longer. And that's because the system will actually be checking for all the variants that would be applicable to this system. It's not been optimized for just running within a, a virtual environment. So that uh, getting your sort of devices ready takes quite a bit longer. Whereas under the one where we use the sysprep mode VM, it was al almost instantaneous. Finishes loading. We're just going to switch across to the XML file that we created before. We're just going to open that up and we're just going to take a copy of the content because what we want to do is paste that into the virtual machine. So we're just going to reconnect to the virtual machine so we can actually connect via the Hyper-V manager so we can open up an enhanced session. So we're just going to open up an enhanced session, just fit the screen resolution on. So we'll just jump into the virtual machine through this connection because then we'll be able to open Notepad 
and we'll be able to paste in the unattended answer file. So hopefully just hit paste. So there's the answer file which is going to go and set the screen resolution that we created earlier on. So we'll save that file and then we'll be able to use that as the file that the sysprep will actually use. So we're just going to go to um, our drive C, drive C and we'll just save it as an unattend file. So unattend.xml. Oops, spell it correctly. So we've saved that at the root of drive C. So we're going to do exactly the same as we uh, did before. We're going to go and actually open an administrative command prompt and we're going to run sysprep. So we're going to go into the sysprep folder, run sysprep.exe. The only difference to what we did last time is we're actually going to tell it that we want to use an answer file as well. So generalize we used, ubi we used. So now we're using the unattend and then we're going to specify the file name that we actually want to use for the unattended answer file. So c colon backslash unattend.xml and then we'll just use the mode colon vm to speed up the hardware plug and play and again we'll get it to shut down once it's finished. So we'll just watch this. So the sysprep process is just coming to an end. Virtual machines just started shutting down because we had an enhanced session. I've actually just lost my connection. So but you know ultimately all you want is for the virtual machine just to be shut down. So that will be shut down in a few seconds. So this time again, exactly the same as before, we will now have a new virtual hard disk. This one now has an unattended file which we can actually use for building our machines with a screen resolution. So we're just going to get rid of the one we created earlier uh, as we have no need for that. We're effectively replacing that file. We'll look at the properties of the virtual machine we've just created and we'll be able to confirm where the virtual hard disk is by looking at the virtual hard disk folder. So again we can see it's on the cluster storage volume 1 folder structure. So we'll go and browse to that folder structure in Explorer and we'll copy the file from there and actually into our library server again. Okay, so we'll just go and pick up the virtual disk file and we'll take a copy of that file and store it on our library server. We're back once that file copy is complete. So with the file copy complete, as always we need to read the library just so that we can see the new virtual disk file and again exactly the same as we've done in other exercises we'll just delete the virtual machine that we've been testing with so that was the one that you know we've now sys prepped with the answer file in so we'll get rid of that before we start provisioning a new virtual machine again so the machine's all deleted and we're ready to go so we'll go to the create virtual machine create virtual machine this time again we're going to pick our VHD file, same as we've been doing, but this time this VHD file has the unattended file inside it. So we're now going to the virtual machine a name. Again we'll review the hardware configuration, so predominantly interested in obviously just setting the network adapter and also configuring the high availability settings. So obviously their VHD is selected. We'll change the network adapter to management and we'll enable the availability box. So we'll press next. We'll deploy to a cloud. We'll deploy to the a data and production cloud again. And again, we'll just um, turn off virtual machine just in case you know, someone's to shut the hypervisor down. Again, it's only a test environment. So as we've seen several times in this video, We've now got our virtual machine starting to provision and it'll be a case of just waiting to see that virtual machine complete. So we'll come back once the virtual machine's finished build. So the provision job almost completed. Just see it finishing off. And again as before, we can see our virtual machine in existence. So we'll power the virtual machine on. We'll connect to the virtual machine and we can see what the virtual machine experience looks like. 
So we'll just watch while uh, the machine actually starts up. So the machine's booting and provisioning. As you can see, the screen resolution has just changed dramatically because the actual screen resolution box has moved off to the side. And you can actually see where it's now putting in the Windows logo. So not in the center of the screen as we've been seeing while the machine's booted, but it's now moved over to the right hand side. Uh, and if you bear in mind that's the middle of the screen, you can Im then imagine how wide that is. So we can see the screen resolution settings have actually really come into play. So we'll just finish off the personalization just to make sure that all the other steps have completed successfully. So just logging into the virtual machine and again we can still see the situation with the screen resolution off the screen. Um, <clears throat> so it all seems to be working, we're all signed in, uh, all working okay. So we'll just shut the virtual machine down now and clo close that down. So we'll just, uh, we've proved that machine works perfectly okay. So that will hopefully shut down in a few seconds. And we've now completed our imaging process for the Adatum application uh, production team. So that brings us to the end of the video on this lab. So we looked at actually preparing operating systems either just by sysprepping them or actually using an answer file to use in conjunction with the sysprep process.